Hey there YouTube, Travis here. So I am currently halfway through a project right now on the 1992 Toyota pickup truck. This might be my most unpopular video on my channel. I hope not. But today I'm finishing up removing the tires that came with this truck, which are 33 inch BFG all terrains. And they've been on there for about, you know, the entire time I've owned the truck, two years. I'm removing the tires and I'm also removing the suspension modifications that were done on this truck. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things that I learned about the suspension on this Toyota pickup truck and uh, general just little tidbits about running bigger tires and what you need to do if you want to lift the truck or remove someone else's lift like I'm doing here today. So why would I want to get rid of the lift and take off the bigger tires? There's a couple of reasons. Let's take it from the top. If I was driving a vehicle that had a bigger engine, like a V6 engine or a V8 engine, a lot more power. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense to run lift and tires. The reality is with this truck, whenever I'm on the highway, and I'm especially when I'm on the interstate going up a hill, we're really struggling to hold 65, 70 miles an hour. It's actually a shame. I never, ever get to use fifth gear in this truck ever. And really the reason for that is this is a, you know, a 115 horsepower, give or take, four-cylinder engine. This is the 22 RE. If I had a nice big truck with a big V8 or even a, a V6 that could really push the rotational weight of those wheels, um, you know, it, it might make sense to keep it. But right now, doing long road trips and even just going down the highway uh, is kind of a, a frustrating experience. And this truck has some things to help it. It has some thoroughly headers um, and a few other small modifications, but really it's, it's struggling pretty hard and it makes driving on the interstate for long distances not very fun. Another thing worth mentioning, so we've got a set of factory wheels and tires on it now, but my CV axle right here, when you run a lift, uh, the CV axle is, is pressed down at a, at a more extreme angle and it's just going to wear it out quicker. I had to replace one CV axle. I took it to a an independent shop to do that and it was 700 bucks it wasn't fun so again if this was a different truck if this was like something that i i regularly off-roaded or really wanted to keep these wheels and tires i'd invest in a, a diff drop kit um, which will allow your cv axle to sit at a, a less aggressive angle but with the setup that my truck had today uh, it was it was pushing them down and enforcing those cv axles at, at quite an angle and of course, there's the miscellaneous reasons. Um, your speedometer is going to be inaccurate with the bigger wheels and tires. You can get around that by buying a different gear setup for the speedo drive that connects to the transmission, but those aren't really available for this pickup truck. And of course, with these big heavy wheels and tires, your gas mileage is going to go down. Really, when you drive a pickup truck, you're probably not concerned about miles per gallon, but one additional thing to consider when you're running bigger wheels and tires. For me, it's strictly a performance thing. So first things first, how do we lift up the truck? Uh, it's not super obvious where the jack points are on an old Toyota pickup truck. It's different than a car, which will have uh, along the unibody uh, different indications, like an indent to show you where to put the jack, but generally accepted. Cross member here up at the front is a great place Put your jack. The Toyota pickup truck comes with a bottle jack. The previous owner did not include mine, so I just bought one at Walmart here to replace it with. But your cross member for the front and then your rear axle uh, for the back. And then of course you can support this with jack stands uh, along the frame. Remember, break these guys loose on the ground before you have it up in the air. So we are looking at the suspension in this pickup truck and what the previous owner had done. So with your ball joint right here, they had this ball joint spacer fit right underneath inside under the upper control arm here. And this ball joint spacer, if you actually measure it, it's actually only an inch and a half, but this is advertised. If you look around for it online, it's a two and a half inch lift. Uh, that's because once this ball joint spacer lives under here, you're instructed to crank on 
this torsion bar right here, which is connected also to the upper control arm, which twists, and this gives you an additional inch of lift. Um, if you give that, mm, it looks like about 12 turns, give or take. We're about to find out because I'm about to lower by cranking down or loosening on the bolt for the torsion bars, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's just focus on the ball joint spacer right here. So this ball joint spacer right here, I'm not, this part's already been done. There are way better videos on installing this. My favorite is from Duke Off-Road. Um, he does it in about three minutes. But in order to get that ball joint spacer in there, you have to grind away some material from the backside of this upper control arm in order to get it to fit. Um, most people, when they install it, they will put the bottle jack itself in between the upper and lower control arm here behind um, the sway bar. It'll stick a bottle jack in here and they'll force the upper and lower control arms to open to allow you to put that spacer in. Uh, fun fact, I didn't actually have that bottle jack at the time. I was working with a scissor jack out of a passenger car. So I went ahead and put that right here and that lifted the entire assembly up enough for me to stick a socket right here. So it opened it way up and I was able to stick a socket in there to keep this open just enough for us to slide out the ball joint spacer. Um, for installing it, you probably want the bottle jack to get even more expansion, um, but uh, that's a solution that, that worked for us. So that's the short of it. Whenever you're messing with this hardware, um, I went out to a hardware store and bought grade eight bolts. Um, with the amount of, of stresses that this is going to endure um, using a, a high quality hardware like a grade eight bolt um, is, is really the smartest move. Well, we've seen the parts that were used to lift the front of the truck. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rear. So now we're under the rear. And as we can see, we have this block right here, which is not here from the factory. From the factory, these two plates just rest on top of each other. Uh, so what we have here is a, a block. I'll measure it. This looks like about an inch and a half. And what this does is it just pushes, pushes uh, between the axle and the leaf springs that much more lift. So when I go to replace this, one thing I'm gonna run into is these U-bolts, which are obviously aftermarket U-bolts. Once I remove these, we're gonna have a lot more threads exposed, the length of the block exposed down, and I am probably not gonna have enough thread uh, to put on the nuts, which is actually an okay thing because you really should not reuse these U-bolts once they've been disturbed. So once you break those nuts loose on the bottom, um, reason being is that the threads on these U-bolts, these are rolled threads, um, you know, those aren't optimum, and it's done by design. These aren't supposed to be reused. And once you crank down on the nuts for these, um, again, not like superhuman, you know, the these are 9 16 U-bolts, I think I read somewhere that you should put about 60 foot-pounds of torque on these. So not He-Man stuff, but once you tighten down on them, it's going to mal the threads a little bit. It's going to deform them. And if you try to tighten them again, you might run into a situation where you don't get them as tight as they should be because they just, they can't be tightened anymore. So I'm going to remove one of these U-bolts and then I'm going to take it to an auto parts store, find one that's about an inch and a half shorter uh, that has plenty of thread and is the same diameter. And again, the length is about an inch and a half shorter and uh, we should be, should be good to go there. Um, these are spring, leaf spring over axle. If you're working with a Toyota pickup truck that's two wheel drive, uh, the leaf springs are under the axle. Another thing worth mentioning, um, so in order to mess with that block, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jack up the truck by putting the jack underneath the rear differential, the pumpkin here. So we're gonna jack up under here. First thing we're gonna do is support the frame with the jack stands. And then, once that is supported, we're going to continue to lift up on the pumpkin um, because in order to mess with that block, 
we need to remove the bottom bolt for the rear shocks and they're kind of stretched out right now and so it's going to be a pain taking them off and even a bigger pain putting them back on so we're going to go ahead and, and raise this up so that way there's not any weight on the rear axle to make this whole thing easier all right so i'm going to be watching the shocks and the leaf spring we're just going to try to give this just a little bit of relaxation here but i don't want to get this so high that it starts lifting the truck off the frame again you realistically could remove the uh, wheels for this too but i'm leaving them on and so when it when it comes to measuring these u-bolts we're going to look at the inside distance so we got about three and a quarter here then we look at the length the straight part after the bend so these are right around eight inch total would be about nine and a half but we measure them after the bend stops from the top and then when we look at the threads oh it's real hard to tell but those look like right about half inch the socket we need is a seven eighths and if you don't have a good set of deep sockets i don't you'll have to go out and buy a socket that fits around the existing nuts there pretty nicely and then for this bottom bolt i had to put this big pipe on the edge of my socket this is a 17 millimeter socket and oh, 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 oh she's loose man that's nice so we're gonna start with this side take this out so as you can see it's been a few hours but the two metal plates are now touching here's a few things i learned so first while I was able to break this bottom bolt loose for the shock, it was much easier to loosen the nuts on the two U-bolts and then let this plate drop. Uh, and that allowed me to wiggle the shock off much more easily. Uh, other things, on the two plates themselves, uh, there is a, it almost looks like a nut that hangs off the bottom of the top plate. And then there's an indent in the uh, plate below that it goes into. You can see this on the actual spacers themselves. Um, in order to get those to line up, what you have to do is you're already supporting the frame as high as you can go on jack stands. Then I have a jack on the pumpkin of the rear axle and then another jack goes right next to the leaf springs. We did them on the, the front of the axle, so right in the front. And then what you do is you can raise and lower the two jacks in order to raise the leaf spring jack to get you enough space to get the spacers out. And mine were in there real hard. I wish I had this on video, but we had to pull and twist and use chisels and hammers. They were really stuck in there, but uh, they did come out. And then you can lower the leaf spring um, and manipulate the axle in order to help get the u-bolts out because then you start hitting the the top of the frame there but uh, that in itself wasn't so bad what was a little more difficult was hunting down uh, replacement u-bolts so today i went to four different auto parts stores and finally lucked out with napa but i honestly didn't luck out because i have to return these u-bolts so as measured they're three point two five inch on the inside inner thread to inner thread um, and I knew about the length I needed um, but you can see there's tons of thread on these so even if these are too long you can just tighten them up and then cut the excess uh, with a grinder or probably a dremel would be more appropriate here's the problem is that the actual diameter I wasn't paying attention uh, this is too wide and so when you try to install them they just won't go through those holes right there so because they won't fit I have to return these and honestly this whole experience has kind of shown me that I should really just have bought these online which is what I'm going to do because these u-bolts from Napa and they are nice enough where on the back they show you all the different parts numbers on the back for what they have and the 4039 
is right here. That's the only one they have in the square. That's 3.25 inch. So online, these are about 15 bucks a piece. Now these are $30 a piece. So four of these was $120, which was a bit of a surprise. I wasn't really ready to spend that, but uh, I'm gonna return them, order some new U-bolts online. And then in the meantime, I'm gonna put some spacers on these just so I can move this vehicle around the driveway. Um, this is not a permanent solution though. Okay there YouTube, well, again, do as I say, not as I do here. This is a very temporary situation for me so I can move this truck around, but I ended up needing inch and a half spacers here, not one inch, I had to take my one inch spacers back. You wanna to torque down, you torque by going diagonally uh, for when you torque, and then I put my shock on when it was lower and then tightened all these up and it brought it up with it. So with the rear back to factory ride height, we examine the front now. With those inch and a half blocks removed, and we're just measuring from the top of the tire here to the rear of the truck, we're looking at about 13 inches. Then in the front, again, we've removed those inch and a half blocks from the ball joints, but we're sitting at right at about 14 here. So I'm assuming the original owner, or the last owner, uh, followed the advice to get two and a half inches in the front by cranking down on the torsion bars to get another inch. So let's go ahead and undo that right now. So you do need to jack up the front of the truck and get the wheels off the ground. Don't forget to chalk your rear wheels and put up a jack stand, just like everything else we've been doing. So again, this is your torsion bar right here. It runs all the way back to here. And then this is your adjusting bolt right here. This is 22 millimeter. And then there's a nut on the top right here. And you can actually see it if we look at the other one, all the way up there. And so what I did was a week ago, and then tonight I hit it with some PB blaster. I'm pretty lucky in that this is actually a relatively rust free uh, Toyota pickup truck, a lot of them have not held up this well, unfortunately. So I definitely recommend hitting the nut, the at least the nut up there to start uh, before you try and either crank down, tighten to raise the truck, or to loosen it uh, by loosening this bolt. So not a great camera angle, but that is the top of the adjustment bolt and nut. As we loosen this, we should see the nut stay in place and then the threaded bolt move. If this isn't happening, if the nut is turning, you could probably put a wrench on it if you got a helper, um, but you can also replace the nut and the bolt. This is a 1994 Toyota pickup. Older ones from the late 80s, like 86 to 89, will also have a lock nut that sits on top of the main nut you'll need to bust that loose first, uh, but this one does not. Okay, here we go. And I'm actually watching my phone's screen as I do this. All right, we can see just the threads are turning here. This is good. One. Two. The one rotation. So that was 12 rotations on the end of that bolt. We got pretty lucky here. Our nut didn't move, just the threads. So now we go and do 12 rotations over there on the other side. One of the other side effects of raising the vehicle by tightening on the torsion bars is that it gives the truck a really rough ride. I mean, this truck rides harsh, harsher than any other Toyota I've, I've ever driven. Uh, you feel every single bump. So I'm hoping, hoping that by loosening on this torsion bar, the ride gets a little bit softer. Um, according to some guides online, you know, you can use this to get an inch, inch and a half a lift out of your truck for free. 
they really don't advise doing anything beyond that. That's when you need to look at other other things like the ball joint spacers to, to get you some more lift. But some people do this as a way to run 33-inch tires on the truck. So, all right, down we go. After adjusting the torsion bars, you'll need to take it around the block a couple times. I haven't done that yet. I've just lowered the truck, but we can now measure... and see that we are sitting right around 13 inches, which is great. 12 rotations were about an inch. Um, I think my left side, when I looked at the top of the bolt, um, you can see the truck is sitting a little lower on the passenger side, there was a lot less threads exposed when I was done with all this. So maybe that was something that uh, was always just a little bit off, or maybe I counted wrong because I was counting in half rotations, but I'm probably gonna put a couple more cranks on the passenger side just to bring it up just a little bit. Uh, and then we'll measure it and we'll be good. So now the final step is normally just taking the truck to get aligned. You definitely have to get it aligned after you mess with the torsion bars and definitely after adding or removing ball joint spacers. But there's one other oddity that comes with the territory and it has to deal, deal with the parking brake cable. So looking at the rear of the truck, we can see the parking brake cable is now being pinched by the leaf springs. When there was that inch and a half block right there, uh, there really wasn't an issue with that happening. And I think from factory, I'm almost certain because I looked at a picture of one, the cable goes over the leaf springs uh, to the rear wheels. But uh, that probably caused a conflict when they put the block in, so they had to move it. So this is one last thing that has to be taken care of. The cable is in a couple pieces when it comes out of the cab, but the final two pieces this cable right here, and then this one, and they each go to these bell cranks that uh, make the rear drums engage. And it looks like this is just a cotter pin up here, so I'm going to try my luck. We're going to pull out that cotter pin, see if I can wiggle these cables free, and just run them over top of the leaf springs. If I run into trouble where they rub on the top, I can look at adding washers to this bracket here to raise it up. There's a similar one over here for this cable. So we're going to go ahead and see if I can get lucky with these uh, cotter pins and just moving the cable. Okay, so we've got one side loose, the passenger side. And it originally went in that hole right there, just a hole. And then on the cable itself, the cable is just this one piece. There's a washer and then there's this cotter pin which goes in in this fashion, sits in there like this. Uh, and then there's this pin, which I hammered out using this punch and just a, a regular hammer. I, I went slow. I tried to make sure I wasn't bending the bracket or anything, but now the real test here is if we go above the leaf springs, it's looking like we'll have at least maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch there. So I'm willing to chance this. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this, disconnect the other side while we've got plenty of slack, and then try and reconnect these guys and, and go from there. Okay, and there's still a little bit of tension on this cable. So I manually pulled the bell crank out, just put an old nut there, actually one of the nuts that used to be here. And now I can actually get this around it pretty easy the washer goes inside the forks and then the the uh it's not a bolt but the stopper goes through and then the cotter pin goes in on the end and now the parking brake cables look much less stressed now this is great i think this project is nearly finished the only thing left to do is take this to the alignment shop tomorrow morning so where this came out we're pretty even on all four tires we're sitting a little bit lower than I thought we'd come out to. We're sitting at about 12 and a half inches from the top of the rim to the bottom of the fender, but that's okay with me. This truck still has a ton of ground clearance from the factory. I'm pretty satisfied with it. I'm gonna go drive it around for about 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes through the neighborhoods, um, trying to take as many corners normally uh, as I can hopefully get those torsion bars fully settled. I'm going to measure it one more time in the morning, and then we're going to go ahead and get it aligned.
So there YouTube, some quick observations with driving with the smaller wheels. This is way nicer. So previously with the 33s, I'd have to rev it up above 2,500, realistically three grand to shift every single time. And now this is more in line with a lot of other Toyotas I've owned where, you know, I can shift it around two or maybe even 1,800 RPM, which is nice. I can even do a second gear uh, start from a stop sign, which before the engine would lug so much where that was impossible. Um, the ride might be a little bit smoother, but it's hard to tell. The previous owner of this truck replaced a lot of the bushings, um, like the sway bar bushings and the sway bar link bushings, uh, with red polyurethane replacements over the original rubber. Probably an improvement overall, but those just inherently have a bit of a stiffer ride. But uh, overall, this truck is significantly easier to drive, um, and I'm quite satisfied so far. Okay there YouTube, well we're back from the alignment shop. We have the following results. The camber and the toe are all straightened up. Doesn't look like the caster changed at all, but it looks like that only affects things while it's turning. Um, but we were out of spec. And this thing now goes down the road nice and straight. It's pretty solid and I'm pretty happy with the results. All right there YouTube, well hopefully that was some helpful information if you're thinking about messing with the suspension height of your 89 to 95 Toyota pickup truck um, or similar models. Until next time.